Hi, it's Tracy Build. The topic today is closing. I want to be brutally honest. We talk to many, many people that just say we want more focus on closing. We want more focus on closing. Show our people how to close. Yet we're spending time on the front end of the sales process with working in the referral market, getting people to refer quality referrals to you, teaching you how to transform inquiries into on-site visits through our connection sheets and even capturing those calls by training your backup team. Then utilizing the visit planning sheet and having a wow factor on your tour so that the resident to be walks away thinking, wow, I could live here. Wow, I didn't expect that. And then helping you with your follow-up tools, your various follow-up to the visit connection sheets, my five-step phone system that teaches you to get five yes responses from each prospect you speak with. And then the closing tools, such as the strategic close worksheet and the many, many pieces of verbiage that we've taught you and the whole concept that it's a series of small steps closing. There is no inquiry tour and close today. We're in a very different market. And when I hear this level of frustration on teach my people to close from the people we're working with every day, it continues to reinforce to me that our industry's not yet turned a corner. There is no rocket science, one simple closing technique. I personally cannot change the status that we're in with the real estate market. It is improving, but we have a long way to go. So companies that have experienced a decline during the last couple of years are a little bit in panic mode, especially if they opened a new project and that's a tough place to be in right now. Yet we have new projects that are doing very well. But what they understand, it's not just about training people on the close. You see, we have to teach you to do a much better, more thorough job early in the sales process, excavating like an archaeologist, what is it that made that person come to you in the first place? Why are they there? And if you're an independent living, okay, you're saying it's not needs driven. I'm telling you it is. There's something that made them pick up the phone and call, particularly if they've done it within the last two years, because trust me, they did not want to. But many of our sales counselors are just rushing through the whole inquiry process in the tour. And then they're shocked when people don't close and buy. And then we're supposed to put a big band-aid on it and fix it when the sale doesn't happen and help you miraculously get the sale to close. That would be the get rich quick, easy way. Unfortunately, the way to land lots of closes, double what you're doing now, is to understand that you have to do your due diligence early in the sales process. And I seem a little heated and passionate because I am. I need you to get this. Sales counselors today, many of them that we're working with, they're overwhelmed by the amount of information that we're trying to teach them. They focus on the paperwork or the amount of paperwork and the number of connection sheets they had to do. Instead of understanding, thank goodness I have this tool because it helped me to uncover more about this prospect than I have on any prospect in the last two years combined. And I learned it in the first 15 minutes on an inquiry call versus waiting for them to come on site and spend the next year getting to know them. You have to really get that to close sales faster, you've got to dig deeper and do a better job early on, starting with your referral effort. You understand that a referral lead has twice the closed conversion of a non-referred lead. So you could dump $30,000 into an ad campaign that goes over the course of a quarter, or you can invest time and energy in a very small budget into courting your inner circle or your top 10 to 12, 13 local referral sources that have the greatest potential to refer you the kind of resident you want. But that means for you to get the referral, you have to commit to being out there and in front of your inner circle each and every week consistently and speaking a message of who's your ideal referral source, you know, and then communicating 
thank yous and updates on people who had, they have referred. And then, you know, just building the relationship, learning the names of their children and their spouse and their hobbies and what they did over the weekend. People refer to people they like. Yet many sales counselors and even regionals and owners and operators that we work with, they don't want to invest the time or hold people accountable to the referral effort because it's just too time consuming and overwhelming. But here's the thing, in this market crash that we just experienced, experience, those clients that got this referral message and implemented and worked it for three to six, seven months, they grew occupancy. Our average client, our total portfolio of students and buildings, excuse me, buildings that we're working with, and the last year in 2009 experienced a 9.3% increase in overall occupancy. Think about that. And this includes those communities that kind of tanked. You know, they we have those tankers too that pulled us down, but overall we still grew while our market went in the toilet. So I want you to think about growth, strategy. You've got to do the things that you don't want to do. And you'll know when you're doing them, no wonder so few people are successful. Most people aren't going to do this because it's not easy. Therefore, if I do it and I stick to it, I am going to fill this building. Then your inquiry connection sheets, see them for what they are. They're a gift to you. They're a tool to keep you focused on finding needs and building value regarding not the move in, just the visit the visit experience. That's your first sale. And you're not going to have a 75% inquiry tour conversion by winging it. It's not going to happen. You're going to ask two questions and start selling. And if you don't believe me, do a mystery shop on yourself or on your organization. Then you need to think about, even though it takes five minutes, stopping and pondering, what can I do on this visit that's going to wow my prospect because this is my only chance to make a fabulous first impression. And if I can do that, then before they leave, I can schedule them to come back in the next seven to 10 days for something else, even maybe tomorrow, our Friday night cocktail party, our Saturday brunch, our movie night, um, dinner with a, a table of residents where they could just pick their brain, a home visit. If you create value and wow them, they will be more likely to say yes to your suggested next action step. And if you do a one extra, which is the gift, there's a 70% better chance they will say yes. And then your due diligence in your follow-up, making the same day follow-up call, the next day thank you note, and the following day doing your follow-up to a visit connection sheet or the day after, doing these things that you don't want to do but that you must learn to do with diligence and consistency, that is going to be key to your close. It's not salvaging it down the road when you realize they did not see the value in what you were offering. This message is not an easy one to accept, but it's the facts that I wanted to share with you so you can better grasp why we're trying to get you to do the many systems we are. Again, selling today is not like it was yesterday. You have to be better equipped. The good news is we're giving you the tools. We're giving you the training, the webinars, the coaching. You simply have to act and take action. Thank you. Go forward and make it happen. Have a great day.